We're back in the body shop today, and we're gonna get this beast welded up and sent to paint. It's kind of hard to make out what's truck and what's not. So anyway, I've taken our, our uh, outside panel off again, and because where it joins up here, like I said, there's a little bit of continuation of damage, okay? So what I'm gonna do is come in here, and I'm gonna pull some of this out. I'm, I'm shooting it at this angle so that you can see kind of where the reflection, you're looking at the reflection, you'll see it rounding right there. That should be nice and smooth. So we need to push this out a little bit, and um, also, up here there's a little bit of a, a bow so this this line right here is what we're gonna work on and we're just gonna get this close and we're gonna try to get this pushed out a little bit so I'm gonna be teaching myself uh, PDR over the next couple years and I just got my for my first kit I just got a little kit off of Amazon this is a couple hundred bucks so this is a great way to get into PDR so it comes with you know, a couple of hammers. It's got some glue guns in there, some pull tabs, and uh, that kind of stuff. Now, I'm not in any way proficient in this yet. This takes a long time to learn, and it's a totally different beast. But um, you know what? I, one thing I was impressed with is their slide hammer. Man, that, that little sexy little beast right there. It's pretty awesome. So this this is used with the glue tabs. You just slide your glue tab in there. You know, you glue this onto the panel slide this in and then you got a slide hammer so there's the tab and uh, these tabs are not very good so you have to pay good money for the good tabs which is crazy to me because they want like 160 bucks for little pieces of plastic that are just little pieces of plastic so I'm going in for some of the smaller tools because I really don't require a lot of pressure and I have easy access it's counterintuitive you would think you push out and then it just stays there but it doesn't what you have to do is give it some pressure on the back side, give it some pressure on the back side, and then fix your dents, right? So I, I'm i low right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work up here into this section, and I'm gonna push that out. And then we've gotta get this crease back at a higher point, and the only real way to do that is to push the panel out and then tap this area in. So if we just tapped it in, it would be low. It's pretty good. We've got more of a gap now. Now we're just going to bring this whole section out a little bit. We've got our panel fit back on here. That's going to help us determine where we need to move what. So see, it doesn't take much to get it back to where you need it. Okay, so check out our fit, right? We're pretty good here, but then it falls off significantly right here, right? And so what's our problem? Is, the, is this panel bent? Well, more than likely it is not bent. This is our new panel. This is our damage panel. So. We're lined up all this way, and then it falls off right here, and this needs to come out, right? But this right here needs to go in. So when we bring this in, okay, so look. I can hit my finger on there. Hey, it's, there you go. So you can see that right here, I have a huge gap. Now let's take you to the other side. Same thing right there, right? So we're way off. Okay, so looking at this, what do we do? Well, we need to bring this up, and we need to bring this out. So we're gonna massage it a little bit. I'm gonna bring this point out this way and this up, but I'm gonna take this panel off when I do it. fit up there I'm gonna throw some screws in there pack her down then we're gonna hang the door so it, uh, it may or may not line up so we're just gonna put a couple screws in that gives us the ability to pop those screws out and then line it back up in a different position you know while the doors are still on very important
from the top down, we're gonna check our gaps, right? And other than the line right here, I see no difference in the gap, which is fantastic. It's a nice gap all the way. We're gonna leave the door in place for now. I'm gonna take off the top two sections and then we're gonna weld in that third section, which is the main support piece. We will have to remove that third section and uh, that allows us to get access and clean up the areas, drill spot welds where we need to, but we'll be able to put it right back in the same spot because it's now located by all the screw holes that we put in there. Get to work. So you can see here, these are all the factory spot welds that I had to cut out, okay? So we just used a spot weld drill to remove those. And then right here, these are all my screws that I put in. Now these little screws are what's gonna help us to locate this back in that same position that it's in that we know fits, okay? higher than the auto set material thickness gauge tells us. That's why I like to set this stuff myself. I want to give you an idea of these welds. You can clearly see the ones with the holes in them, I had to I had to pull out a little bit further, but that's a nice thin that's a nice thin bead right there. a ton of welds right there right because I'm gonna be putting another panel on top of that panel and I'll be spot welding through all three of those so you know more would just be more once again just set my cup on the edge so if it's wider like this, what I'll do is I'm gonna take my wire, and I do this just by rotating my cup. I'll take my wire and I'll set it right here, and then I'll bring it across. So I'll start here and I'll drop down. And then you just bridge that gap. Sometimes you can give it multiple pulses, you know. You've been told don't heat the panel up too much. And you're absolutely right. That's it. That's all you want to do. Leave it alone. Let it cool down. Now, all you guys know that 
the temperature it's going to take to warp or change metal is going to be that temper line. There we go. The heat only traveled to that ring and then it stopped. It's warm out here, but it ain't warp warm. And now it's cool enough to where I can just put my hand on it. And that's just a few seconds after I've welded. Not seconds, no, 10, 10 seconds minimum. Don't stick your finger on welds. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so this is what we want. We just want to keep moving. So we'll do one here, then we'll kick over, we'll skip, we'll do one here, and then we'll skip this one and do one over there, and uh, just keep working our way through it. Alright, I'm going to fix this hole right here. Just little taps. That's it. Done. Okay, I can touch it. The urge is just to blast a weld across there. You'd be doing two days worth of body work if you do that. And here's a, here's a burn through right here. Problem solved. That'll cool. We'll stay away from that area for a bit. Come back to this side. Now, you can start to see that we've got multiple tacks forming here, right? So, these tacks are going to keep building and overlapping until we have a solid weld there. And you would think, you might think that this isn't very strong. This is strong, people. This is every bit as strong as the metal next to it. Okay, it's a little warm. We're going to give it a minute to cool down. What makes this strong is I welded a higher heat than um, is recommended. That's why those welds don't stick out, right? They're, they're very smooth and flat because of the penetration, you know, it's, it's inside. And um, this sheet metal is so thin. So I kind of rub my hand over it too because that heat will pull off the metal and into your hand, right? So it will transfer out of the metal and this helps to cool it quicker without, you know, quenching it or something. Take your time. Right, Carrie? Yep. Take your time on the welds and you won't do body work later. All right, the welding's done. I've got my DynaBraid mini belt sander and uh, model number on this guy is 18100. So 18100. And I've got Norton Blaze belts on here. I believe these belts are superior to any other belt that's out there, right? They're fantastic. What makes them so good is that uh, for me, I mean, they cut 
all of them cut, but these last longer, and that's the key. I don't know what Norton uses to hold this stuff down. Okay, so you can imagine you're grinding with this, right? But the wheel tip right here, as it rolls over, tends to put cracks in the, because uh, it's such a tight area, so it's such a small little wheel, it's rolling that over, putting a lot of stress on it. Norton does something to keep these on here. I don't know what it is, but it works. So, back up to the weld. I'm gonna grind this with this mini belt grinder, and I'm gonna keep my grind area super tiny. Look how flat that is. Look how smooth that is. So that's what we're going for. This pick would get stuck if it couldn't just slip right over everything. And you don't see that pick bouncing around. Watch it. Watch it. It is perfectly flat. Perfect. That's what we want. We're not going to cake this with Bondo. We're going to put a little bitty cover right here just to cover the, the transitions. So if you're a little more precise in your cuts, you're going to save yourself so much time in body work later. Just very, very precise cuts, very precise welds. Keep your temperature cool. Weld hot. So it's a lot of heat in that weld, but over a very short period of time. And man, it just really burns it all together and locks it in. I can't think of a better way to do this, guys, honestly. <laughs> It really is awesome to watch them come back together. I've got the headliner in, everything, uh, everything's starting to be put back together. We still have the back glass and all that stuff, but it's the end of the day. I'm gonna head home. And we got the whole crew detailing out here. What about if somebody